Hey everyone, today we're going to cover stamina. Now, as you may know, in a lot of simulator games, you have things like backpack storage, which you have to upgrade, uh, increase your backpack size to be able to hold more of whatever the, uh, whatever the like currency, if you will, is. Now, stamina will kind of act as our backpack size. So, you say you have 250 stamina, you'll only be able to have 250 points at one time before you will have to exchange into coins. And then what we can do is create an upgrade, which will increase the stamina, which will be our second shop upgrade. So it will all start coming together very soon. Today we're just going to make the stamina. We'll make the upgrade in a future video. Maybe next. I'm not. Maybe next video. I'm not too sure yet. But before we start making this stamina, I want to um, fix a couple of things from last episode. Now, last episode we made this shop. However, there's a uh, couple of things I want to change. First of all, inside the uh, shop. So under shop scripts, open upgrade shop one. Uh, you'll see everything's fine in here, but uh, when we are firing the Sharp Grade Shop 1 client, we're doing that whenever they're touching the pad. But what you'll see is if we go into Starter GUI, Upgrade Shop, Open Upgrade Shop 1, we are, rather than setting the visibility to true, we are setting it to what it's not. So this may create a couple of uh, a glitch where when you're standing on the pad, it might just start flickering on and off. Uh, so what we're going to do is just make this equal to true. Now this is the first thing. So if we were to now hit play and play here, if we touch the pad, it shouldn't flicker on and off, whereas before it would. So we'll walk over. I'm <laughs> very low on points, so I've got to you know waddle over. But when we get there, it shouldn't keep flickering on and off. It should be quite nice. There we go. You see, it doesn't flicker on and off now, so that fixes something. We can still close the shop, open it, and close it. Awesome. And the next thing I want to show you is our uh, when it comes to in the actual shop under the scrolling frame under the upgrade. You'll see under our text, we are not abbreviating our text. So that's what we need to do. So if you remember correctly, we need to create our local abbreviation module. Which is going to be equal to require game dot replicate storage dot abbreviation module. And now what we can do is where it's like this dot dot player dot upgrades dot upgrade one cost, we can just say abbreviation module colon abbreviate numbers, and then we want player. We just want this player dot upgrades dot upgrade one cost dot value in there, and we want before this to string. So exact same thing as normal. We're just adding in our abbreviation module and converting it to a string. Now this is going to get a bit long so what I'm going to do is just bring this down a line just so it's easier to see we can fit it into one into two into two lines we can fit it into like one screen size and next we want to do the same thing here so I'll cut that control X or command X and we're going to say abbreviation module colon abbreviate numbers to string and then the number. Now once again we can click play here. I'm not sure if I've bought any upgrades, I can't remember when we open the shop, but we'll walk over anyway, have a look. So when we get over here, if we have a look, so 675 coins. Let me just um, give myself a load of coins to test this. So leader stats, coins, I'll just give myself tons, why not? But we're gonna buy this a few times and you'll see we're abbreviating our cost. We don't really need to abbreviate the level. I highly doubt anyone's going to have level 1000. So it might be a bit pointless doing that. So just for the sake of optimization, making the game run a bit faster, so there's less code to run, I will go and actually remove the abbreviation module from our level because we don't really need to abbreviate that. No one's really going to have level a thousand of an upgrade. I highly doubt it. Anyway, that's that's all the fixes I just wanted to cover. So now we can start making the stamina. So to get started with the stamina, we're going to open leader stats and we're going to have to make a new variable. Now let's copy our rebirths for this. This isn't going to be in the leader stats, but this is going to be in our other stats um, folder. So what we will have in here is local stamina. We'll call the variable stamina because that just makes sense. Date not dot name is going to be equal to stamina. Once again, it'll be an integer value, but rather than it being in the leader stats, it's going to be in other stats. And by default, I think the value should be about 250 because um, or maybe a hundred. This will be like the first backpack size you ever start with, and then you'll have to upgrade. Now, if you'll remember correctly, when we made the uh, level and cost uh, in the last video, uh, even though the cost had a default value, I think it was five hundred. Uh, yep, five hundred. It when we first ever loaded the game, it started at zero, and I said we had to reset our data store. So what we can do is we can fix this. So let's create a local save value seven equals player dot other stats dot stamina and now 
once again, save value seven dot value equals get saved seven. Now what you'll notice is by the end of this series, this is going to be a very long um, list of data store. You can simplify it, you can make tables where you don't need tables, rather than having all these variables, you can make an even better data store than this. I did, I think I did mention that in the first ever in our data store video. Uh, I said that there are better ways of doing the data store, but this is the most simple one uh, to learn. So this is what we're going to stick with, but in the future you can always work on it yourself. Anyway, once again, we're going to add save value 7 uh, dot value to our values to save. And we need to add player dot other stats dot upgrade. Uh, no, no, it was dot stamina dot value there as well. Now, once again, if we were to play this, we'd start at zero rather than two fifty. So what we can do is um, underneath this if else here under our player added at the at the bottom, we'll say if save value seven dot value equals zero, then because th basically this value should never be zero because by default we want it to be 250. So now if this save value is equal to seven, we just say save value seven dot value equals 250 because we want it, if it's zero, that means it's not uh, saved or loaded properly. So we want to set it back to the default value, which is 250. So we'll set it to 250 and that should be our data store. So if we were to now hit play and play here, we won't be able to see it because we've not created a text label for our stamina. But if we now go to uh, players, your player, other stats, stamina, we see it starts at 250. Okay, so what we're going to do next is be able to display, where we're displaying our points, we want to be able to display the number of points we have out of the number of possible points we can have. So out of the amount of stamina. So what we're going to do is go to our main screen. First of all, we're going to have to expand our points uh, label to make it longer because we're going to have to fit more in. This may look a bit ugly, but you, you can keep it uh, normal if you would like. We'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll keep it normal. We'll see how big it gets. Um, especially when we're abbreviating anyway. So actually, it, it might not be that bad. Um, so let's go under our points, under our local script. And we need to, once again, I'm going to drop down. I'm going to add a dot dot. Then we drop down and add what we need to add. So we're going to, first of all, add us out of, like that, because... Uh, out of the number of possible stamina we can have and then dot dot we're going to abbreviation module abbreviate numbers and we need to abbreviate our stamina so to string player dot other stats dot stamina dot value so now this should display the points out of the stamina so let's have a look if this works let's hit play and it should say like x out of 250 we will be at uh, so there we go 169 out of 250 we can go well above 250, as you'll see, there's no limit, which is what we're going to have to work on in a minute. But you'll see it, we are displaying it properly now. Okay, so now, as I say, we need to limit our points to our stamina, so we can't ever have more stam uh, more points than we have stamina. So under our event script, where every time we add points, what we want to say is if, um, first of all, we want to check that, to make sure that the, play, uh, the, sorry, the points is less than the stamina. So... If the player dot lead, uh, dot other stats actually isn't it? That's where our points are. If player dot other stats dot points dot value is less than player dot other stats dot stamina dot value, then we will add a point. Uh, add our add to our points value. Now we are going to add one more if statement for the sake of safety because if they are using like an auto clicker that's going really like clicking maybe a hundred times a second, that is possible. Then uh, it may be able to, depending on how fast this script executes, compared to um, the number of times the files, uh, the add points is like, fired, we may get some problems where our points goes above our stamina by a couple just because of how fast it's being clicked. So we're going to add a safety net, let's call it a safety net. If um, So basically we're going to do this exact same if statements up here, but we're going to check if it's bigger than the other stats. So if player.leader stats... Dot, um, sorry, I keep saying leader stats. I'm too used to that. If player dot other stats dot points dot value is bigger than zero, uh, bigger than player dot other stats dot stamina dot value. Sorry, um, then we set the player dot other stats dot points dot value, and we have to set that to the uh, stamina. Just to make sure we do cap it at the stamina. It's just kind of a safety net. 
um, in case people are using an auto clicker, you never know. It shouldn't glitch out, but it might. It depends on um, how fast their client's running as well, I suppose. So you'll see, if we now sell this, we're going to go really slow. But uh, it shouldn't go above 250. And it doesn't. There we go. We're capped at 250. And we're stuck at that speed. Now I'm going to show you a little problem. So I'm going to play near one of our orbs. And as we're running about, I'm going to show you something. So we've got our max points. Now if we hit an orb, you'll see it's adding 7 to our points. It's adding a random amount. So we're going above the number of points we possibly can have. So we need this kind of cap on our uh, orbs as well. Now if we open up our orbs, we say we've got loads of orbs with all these scripts in them. Now it could be a bit of a pain adding this entire if statement. So what I'm going to do is exactly this. Now all of our orb scripts should be the exact same. You may have different orbs, but for every orb, like like for example, you may have different orb, but it gives you a different amount. But here's how I'm going to show you to change all of these at once. So if we were to now go to, um, well we've got this if other if player other stats dot points dot value is greater than or equal to zero uh, then we're also going to say and player dot other stats dot points dot value is less than player dot other stats dot stamina dot value then we will uh, run all this code so what we're doing is adding this little and here. Now if we test it with just this orb, so what orb is this? It's this one. I'm going to test it to make sure this does work. So we'll run. We do have more coins than we should, but if we now hit this, it shouldn't go above 280. Yep, so it doesn't actually let us collect the orb because it's maxed out. So it does work. Now we also need to make sure that when we add this random amount of coins, it doesn't go above the stamina value. So what we're going to do is create a local variable above this if statement. Let's say local... Uh, amount or something, just amount for now, equals math.random, the amount we want, which is 2 and 15 here. And now rather than plus equaling math.random, we just plus equal amount. Because we then can then also say, and, now yes, I know this is getting a bit long, but we'll say, and uh, player dot other stats dot points dot value. Now what might happen is if we hit this then our and we add to our thing, our coins, our points, sorry. We, we may see that it actually adds more points than um, we have stamina, so then we go above. So at the end we need to say, once again, if player.otherstats.points.value is greater than player.otherstats.points.stamina, uh, sorry, dot .value, then we say player.otherstats dot points dot value equals player dot other stats dot stamina dot value because we have to once again set it to the max we possibly can actually i tell you what we can do i've just realized anyway i know this isn't working properly but rather than having this in all these orb scripts we can reuse this code so we're going to cut that if statement out anyway let's go to our leader stats script and under our player dot player added right at the bottom below all variables we're going to add this uh, code, so we'll make a while wait do and paste this code in. Now this will make sure that our points value will never go above our stamina value. So now if we were to test and play, this should actually work. So as you'll see we join and it says 250 out of 250. Go down to other stats, points, let's make our points 245 just to test again. So when we touch this orb, it shouldn't go above 250 and it doesn't. So there we go. Anyway, now we need to apply this. Um, let's open it. So we want that orb that we were just working on. We want to apply this and uh, to if bit of our if statement to all of our scripts. So let's copy it. Let's just copy this if player dot other stats dot points dot value is greater than or equal to zero bit. We're going to hit Control Shift F uh, or Command Shift F. And we're, well, we've now got all our orb scripts that pop up. Make sure they are all orb dot orb scripts. And we're going to hit this little arrow here. We've now got this line of code and a replace. We're going to paste this in. So we've got this line of code, this if statement here. And we're going to replace it with uh, all this entire line. So plus we need the then there. So we're searching for if player dot other stats dot points dot value is bigger than or equal to zero then. And we're replacing it with this line here. Like so, so you should have exactly this in your find replace. Make sure it looks exactly like that. And make sure these are all orb scripts and just hit replace all. Yes. It will now open them all up. 
You can close them all individually, make sure there's no errors in each. And now if we were to hit play, you've just made it so all of these should work. So now we can touch all of these and they won't go above your max stamina. Perfect. So that's it for this video, everyone. In the next video, we will probably make a sell, pa uh, sell GUI, forcing you to sell when uh, you have the max stamina. So you reach the max stamina, uh, GUI will pop up. Uh, max stamina reached, sell now, and you can click sell, and it will teleport you over to the sell button. That's what we'll do next episode, ready to then, after that, to work on our upgrade for the stamina. So I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one, everyone. Goodbye.